the reality is that if you're going to try and burn a solid fuel material rather than a gas, then you will get more airborne pollutants. The question is, how significant are they? The second question is, is that really important in the big scheme of things? And the third thing is, how do we minimise them? So th we, we must be in a situation where we don't have the hype getting ahead of the science. And we have done some measurements of different types of wood. We've measured them in stoves, we've measured them in boilers, we've tracked emissions from them. What we find so far is that during the startup phase, the emissions can be really, really high. And that that then calms down and during the normal operation, you end up with a much more stable period. What does that mean for us if we're trying to use them in a domestic setting? Well, across most of Europe, what you often find is that they have a heating season in the winter and stoves are left on for long periods of time. They're not switched on and off several times in a day. And I think from a UK perspective, the climate isn't the same and therefore we tend to maybe put them on and off more often. I think that there's a little bit of, now that we've done the measurements and we can see that the emissions really are much higher during the startup, then there's a little bit of thought needs to be given to whether we should be advising people that it makes more sense to only start them up if you're going to have them on for a long period and really to integrate them more into the heating in your household where you're not putting them on and off multiple times a day. So that's the first thing. The, the second one is the type of wood that you burn really matters. So it doesn't make sense to be burning weird things, to be burning waste material, to be burning really, really wet stuff. Um, those will make the emissions higher. And I think if people realise you know, that that will make it higher, then they would be doing something about it and they would be choosing not to contribute to that. Um, and I, I guess that the blog also is saying, you know, in what context is this important? So I'm standing here in the centre of Manchester, the Mancunian Way's over there, and the air quality around here is not the best in the world. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. So, you know, if, if I were to put a stove here and I were to start it up this afternoon, I would be adding to an already very high level of emissions. That's not the same everywhere in the country. And one of the areas where I think we particularly need to think about is rural areas where we have real, real issues of fuel poverty. Fuel poverty isn't something that just happens in inner cities. Um, you often go to rural areas where you've got very hard to heat farmhouses that are off gas grid. Well, what do we do there? How do we make that low carbon? And there's a trade-off here because climate change is a big issue. Heating is really hard to decarbonise because you can't just switch it on to electricity for everyone. The grid couldn't cope with that. So what do you do? And I do think wood has a role to play. We've shown with our calculations that, you know, you can get greenhouse gas reductions of 70, 80, 90 percent. That's huge. So we should be availing of that. That may cause an increase in airborne emissions. And in some areas that would be unacceptable. But there's other areas where actually it may not be that big a deal. So if you're in a rural area where the ambient levels are low already, then that could be an acceptable way to actually cut our carbon emissions. And there's a little bit of a trade-off. You know, it's the greenhouse gas reduction versus the airborne emissions and which one do we prioritise more?